There's two things that breed ultimate certainty walking in or that swagger walking into performances. Number one, it's getting clear on, or three things I should say, it's getting clear on the skills that you need to do that. Number two, it's making sure that you visualize it or do the mental reps to it to see yourself and create neuro associations, which builds self-belief. And the last part is physically practicing. Those three things are what we stick to with every single one of our pro athletes to get them performing at that next level. And to your point though, like that always confident all, confident all the time mentality, I've seen it lead to people with false confidence yeah, for who sure. don't actually have it. And then it's like they're dealing with self-esteem issues for their entire side. So get away from that word confidence. Visualization will help you build certainty. The other thing it's going to help you build are what are called neuro associations or what's known as in the most common form, muscle memory. So today we wanted to touch on a topic that a lot of athletes not tend to struggle with, but I think lack clarity on because there's so many different kinds of techniques out there, ways, approaches that people have, things that people talk about, whatever it might be, but everything around visualization and goal setting. You know, Chris and I were talking about it before we we started to shoot this episode too, and we were saying like one of the most important things that can help with athletic performance is this, both of these topics. And we want to give you kind of some clarity around that. And most importantly, things like the benefits of visualization what kind and types of visualizations there are out there because there is a lot. We're going to help you narrow that down a bit and just when to visualize, how often to sets and reps, all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to dive into that today, share some stories too about some athletes that have used it and the success they've gotten from it. And hopefully you can move forward and do the same with that yourself. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think even people that are seasoned veterans at visualization sometimes have trouble. Like yeah. one of the major things that um some guys talk about when when i speak with them anyways is <laughs> they see themselves not getting the result that they yeah. want even in their visualization which is just a natural like to me it's a natural thing it's like oh you know a highlight tape sometimes when you're if you're not practicing it well so it does take some time and some practice but uh well and that's, like you'll get there eventually well and that i was just gonna say i think that's a thing too that you've got to realize if you're going to do this visualization the key is that, so let's talk outcomes for a sec. It's going to make you feel like a million bucks. That's the first thing. Like everything we do with every pro athlete we work with does have a form of what we, we call mental reps in it, right? And that is the most important thing. There's two things that breed ultimate certainty walking in or that swagger walking into performances. Number one, it's getting clear on, or three things I should say, it's getting clear on the skills that you need to do that. Number two, it's making sure that you visualize it or do the mental reps to it to see yourself and create neuro associations, which builds self-belief. And the last part is physically practicing. Those three things are what we stick to with every single one of our pro athletes to get them performing at that next level. The key though is understanding that, so like, for example, meditation, some people want to get better at it per se, but the point of being better at meditation is to clear your mind. Mm -hmm. The point at getting better though of mental reps or visualization is to be better at continuously focusing on how you want to do things and seeing yourself do it successfully. So like to Chris's point, there's going to be times that you start maybe where like thoughts are hard to keep focused in your mind or whatever, or maybe you're seeing yourself not get the result that you want, but bear with it, stick with it. It is a skill you need to build. Yeah. And actually some of the players that have gone through that, they've noticed that, okay, once they actually start to see what they want to see, yeah. So that visualization of, I guess you could call it the perfect repetition or the outcome that they want to have, they're actually noticing that they're doing it in the physical side as well. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool indication. Well, maybe not just yet, but it seems to be an indication that they're starting to get the physical side and it's starting to come out more naturally in doing it than just visualizing it. So like yeah. it kind of pairs up, I guess you could say. And then speaking of pairing up the second part to that, or I should say the part with, you know, really making sure how you're using the visualization, it's target setting that kicks that off, mm -hmm. right? So what the way we're going to, the, the way that we do this with our clients, we set the target that we want to accomplish. And we'll talk about properly setting targets in a second. Then we pair it with the visualization so they can accomplish that and become that individual. Because when we set targets here at Moletium, what we always say and focus on, setting a target is not a matter of accomplishing a result. It's actually a matter of becoming a person that can accomplish that result. So if you want to, let's say, score more goals this month, it's not a matter of scoring more goals. It's becoming a player who scores. 
Right. There's a difference, right? It's not a matter of I want to hit, you know, 15 goals this month. That's a great milestone. But the the target that you're really focused on is being somebody who scores more. You can easily do that when you then visualize and break it down into skills and all that. So first and foremost, benefits that we kind of like to look to with visualization and even setting targets. Number one benefit from visualization or mental reps, you're going to build self-belief, mm-hmm. especially in situations you haven't been in before, right? That's a really big one. I mean, whenever we have an athlete that's going into a situation that they've never gotten the result before, we really make sure to use this visualization technique because a lot of people will say, you know, well, I, 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 I'm, I need to be confident when the truth is top athletes aren't always confident. You know, that wavers. Confidence means you've gotten the result in the past. The problem is, what if you haven't gotten that result in the past, right? So right. visualization will help you build that certainty and that self-belief that you need in order to take action so that you have the courage to take action, I should say, so you can get the result and then confidence comes after, right? So it's if you were to lay it out, certainty comes first from visualizing. When you're certain of yourself, you then build courage to take action even when you haven't got the result before. And that courage to take action is what allows you to then go out and get the result, which then builds confidence. Right. right? See, that's interesting because the whole confidence all the time conversation or like you have to be confident throughout the entire season. I think that's such a hard standard to go after simply because like it's almost like you're trying to be confident all the time. That's that's an essence of perfection, is Mm -hmm. it not? And, And that's so hard, like to put that stress on yourself and, and not only just from you, but from others, like you got to be confident yeah. going into this game. I think it's, I think it's like, it's a myth. It's not a myth. Yeah. It's a myth, but it's the, the, like you said, the courage to, to put yourself into those situations to act the proper way. Because like, even for me, uh, I'll be on it. Like in, in some games that I play in right mm-hmm. now, like sometimes I'm fantastic. I know I have the skill. I know I have the ability to do it, but like. In, in one game, I'm not doing it, but in another game, I am. Yeah. It's like, it, it's it's tough. And I think it's having the courage to just every time rely on the skill and build the certainty behind the skill so you can actually do it. Yeah, and exactly. And honestly, forget the confidence all the time. It's, it's not going to be there. And it, it doesn't need to be, though. It's, a, it's just a label for people that don't necessarily understand how people can perform consistently at a high level. Yeah. In in my opinion, it's like, oh, that's a show of confidence. No, that's a show of a lot of preparation. Yeah, it is. And, and that, going out to do the skill at a but high But even speed. even to your point though, like that always confident all, confident all the time mentality, I've seen it lead to people with false confidence. Yeah, for who sure. Who don't actually have it and then it's like they're dealing with self-esteem issues for their entire side. So Get away from that word confidence. Visualization will help you build certainty. The other thing it's going to help you build are what are called neuro associations or what's known as in the most common form, muscle memory, right? If you want to be that athlete that's able to go into performances, not necessarily thinking, and you're just, it's almost like you're just playing and playing and it's like everything's flowing together. That comes from visualization because it's getting into your nervous system now, Mm -hmm. right? So that visualization helps you build that which then you allow yourself to go out and do, and it allows you to stay within your own focus and you see the proper technique behind it. All of that builds that neuro associations or that muscle memory that you need to be able to go and perform without having to think. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, some benefits of target setting. Number one, target setting is nothing more than just a tool to keep you focused. Targets will keep you focused on the right things if you set the right kinds of targets, right? So when you set a target, let's say of like we said, being somebody who scores more, you can then pair that and break it down into being somebody that scores more, right? So when you want to be someone that scores more, you have to break it into a couple skills that go into you scoring more, which now you're in control of. We actually just finished before this shooting a, a YouTube video, which, which if you haven't, check out our YouTube channel um, if that's if you're tuning in just from audio here. But we just did a 10-minute-ish training on how to defeat performance anxiety. One of the biggest things was understanding that this is all about making sure you set a target that's controllable. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, winning is not controllable. Um, Impressing the coach is definitely not controllable. Having a good performance even isn't necessarily controllable. What is controllable is preparing yourself so you go out there and execute. What is controllable is preparing yourself so that you go out there and give your team the best chance to win. Those are all controllable. And what Matt means by not having, like, 
not being able to control a good performance. That's just going into a game and saying, I'm going to have a good game today. Well, that's well, also, sorry, that's also going in there and saying the other team isn't going to test me and prepare to defeat me, which is what right. the teams do. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just saying like what's controllable is, well, all the little actions in order to get to that good game at the result of the end of it, yep. that's what you got to focus on. You can't skip. It's like climbing a ladder. If you skip three rungs, you're like, mm-hmm. good luck, man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And you're going to slip, fall, and beyond hurt yourself. The second thing, again, kind of leading off the first point, so visu- or target setting will keep you focused. But if you set the right targets, it will keep you focused on controllable actions to, to, to build skills around. So meaning, if your target, again, I'm going to keep using this simple example, is to score more goals. The two things you really might need to work on that month and where your total soul focus goes into is getting to the right scoring areas and shooting to score. Those are now becoming your major focus, which you can easily, ta-da, slip into visualization, right? Where it's like, okay, now you know what you need to visualize. You need to visualize perfect technique behind shooting to score and perfect technique, perfect technique, sorry, or getting to the right scoring areas, whatever you want to say or how you want to phrase it. So when you really use these two things in tandem, you're going to build your certainty, you're going to build muscle memory, and you're going to be focused on things that you can control, and you're going to be making sure that you're actually building skills, which is how you actually proceed toward your goals, not any other way of just wishing and hoping it happens. Right, and actually, I think one benefit that I can throw in on top Please. of that that we might not have um, seen just as much yet, but uh, one one individual that I work with, she's a, she's a goalkeeper in, in Ireland, and she was saying, So one of the things that we ask our athletes to do is take that visualization or do that visualization at night before bed. She said, actually, it helps her focus to get into an understanding of what she needs to do for that training session that day. So she likes to do it beforehand. So another benefit might be of just that transition from everyday life to if that's how you want to systemize your day, like that transition from everyday life into the performance or into that training session. That might be another way of, of for someone to focus and get locked in yeah. on what they need to do. And it's just what high performers do, right? Like the best athletes in the world don't go into training sessions without knowing what they're focused on. Mm-hmm. They have targets. Yeah. I want to walk out of this training session feeling this way. Yeah. That's I, how it goes. I'm not wasting my time with. No, don't <laughs> with waste just your whatever. time. <laughs> hey, listen, it's a truth, right? Like time is one of the most precious assets you have as a human being, let alone a human being, sorry, but also an athlete, right? I mean, like when you're an athlete, your time is sped up times two, Mm -hmm. you know? So like you've got to be a master at focusing on the things that really matter and cutting out the BS and the noise of what doesn't. So major benefits of visualization. Let's move into the next step, which is first off, what really is visualization and what really is target setting? Let's start with visualizing. All that visualization is, is mentally rehearsing something. Now, there can be different forms of this mental rehearsal, which could be, you know, through um, watching film. It could be through closing your eyes and visualizing like we do. It could be through mentally rehearsing things. But the point of visualizing is that you're actually going through and rehearsing the actions you need to take to drive results. It is not just seeing the result happen. I want to be very clear on this because I think a lot of times where athletes get this wrong is they just visualize themselves, you know, let's say scoring a goal. And although that's good, that will keep you nice and motivated. There's a certain kind of visualization for that. It's called motivational visualization, where you see yourself just getting the result. The problem with that is you're not going through the actual steps you need to take to be confident or sorry, to be certain in the skills walking into performance. Well, yeah, that's what I mentioned before, of like climbing the ladder. You can't skip a rung. You can't skip a step. Otherwise, you're not going to get there. Not even close. Right? So that's why that's why I think it does become difficult for some people because um, they they aren't able, at the beginning anyways, unless they have some practice, they aren't able to go through those steps mm-hmm. in order to get there, right? But then once you get it, I, again, I think once you start to actually see it, you're doing it physically. Yeah. And that's that's why it's so important with, like you said, to the doing it physically part too. Like, Let's talk about what the word certainty really means for a sec. Certainty is having belief and trust in yourself, Mm -hmm. okay? Confidence is knowing you've gotten the results before and knowing that you can do it again. But again, going back to my original point that I said previously to this, this is all about, this isn't about confidence. This is all about being sure of yourself. And if you're sure of yourself, you're going to take action and you're going to try even if, or you're going to do your best, I shouldn't say try, even if you haven't got those results before, that's what matters. Right. That's what the best do. 
right? So it's like building that up to your point of making sure you have that and using visualization to do that. That's the important part behind it. It's not just about perfect results. It's a matter of getting yourself to take action, even when you're unsure of, you know, the result you can possibly get because you haven't got it before. We need you to be sure of your actions. There's a difference, right? So that's what visualization is. We'll break down the certain types today. Then there's target setting. Target setting is simply, I know a lot of you might be like, well, I know what the target set is, but here's how simple it is. You want to know the type of person you want to be at the end of a 30, 60, 90, or 365 day process. That's what target setting is. So with athletes, we suggest setting targets only in 30 day chunks because of how frequently things change. And the simple question you want to ask yourself is, who do I want to be this month? Simple. So when we're working with top athletes, NBA, NHL, whatever, and we're setting targets with them for the month, when we're answering that question, it's, well, this month for my team and where we're at, they know what their role is and so on. I need to be a player who scores more. I need to be the player who locks it down defensively. I need to be the player this month who, you know, is able to increase um, playmaking abilities for the team. I need to be, but the point is they're answering it in the form of identity, not in the form of results. Right. And does that make sense? I can also say like from experience, uh, with some of the people that I work with, that's a great way to also, an, an added benefit of it is it's a great way to break down your season into different, different chunks. Because if you're someone that maybe sometimes it gets stale in a season, it's coming up Christmas time and it's like, Oh, you know, I'm just kind of getting getting ready to to get off for for that break or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a great way to just help you stay challenged and and something that's different from the team. Like it's yes. it's your own personal um, desire, own personal purpose, and it's it's a great way again to just break up the season. If you're someone that finds you get stale during the season, this is a fantastic way to to kind of break that for yourself. Well, and even to your point. You know, I have a player in the NBA where last year the focus was let's go into Christmas not worrying about anything on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. That was the target for the month. Yeah. Right? And it's like, this is this is what kills me a lot of times about the common mental coaching practice or whatever you want to call it. They all, a lot of people preach, don't get lo- don't let your identity get lost in your sport. And then all they're ever doing is setting targets around sport. <laughs> right? It's like, don't let your identity get lost in sport, but you need to score goals this month. It's like, okay. But instead, if you set targets for your life and you look at like the NBA player, I want to make sure I go into December not worrying about anything at Christmas Day. That's how I want to finish my month. So I'm going to make sure that, because we'll talk about it in a sec, but the milestones I'm going to hit, every day I need to be in the gym. Every day I need to do this. Every day I need to do this. And then instead of focusing on that target, you're then instead focused on the actions. Right. Right. So we follow a a process here at Molotium called TPMAs. So you set a target. You then put a purpose behind it of why it's important to you. You then set some milestones you want to accomplish, and then you break it down into daily actions you need to take to get there. So if we set a 30-day TPMA of, let's do the Christmas one. I want to walk into Christmas break, not being worried about anything on Christmas Day. Okay. The reason this is important is because I know if I perform up to this and the purpose behind it, I'm going to be able to enjoy my family fully on Christmas Day, and I'm going to be able to make sure that I'm not having any worries and I'll be fully present. Great. The milestones then would be that I want to make sure that this month I walk out of every single game feeling like I did everything I possibly can to help the team. That's milestone number one. Another indicator. So a milestone is an indicator that you're actually doing it, Mm -hmm. right? Milestone or indicator number two, um, I'm going to be, you know, let's say at the end of this month, scoring more points than I did last month. So you can put a number to it if you want there because we're not necessarily focused on the milestones. The milestones are just the curriculum we're trying to hit, right? Then one more milestone might be, I'm going to average four points a game by the end of this month. Great. Then the most important part becomes, what actions do we need to take to get there? So the actions you need to take to get there are the daily habits. So one might be, I need to work on my passing every day for at least 15 minutes after practice. I need to work on my mid-range game shooting for at least 10 minutes every day after practice. And I need to make sure that I'm doing my recovery sessions every day. I need to make sure that I'm visualizing five times a week. I need to make sure that I'm watching film three times a week, but that's how we break it down. So there's a target. There's a purpose of why it's important. There are milestones that will indicate what you focus on and the, or if you hit that target. And then the last part, the only true thing you need to focus on is that list of A's or actions. Yeah. 
right? It's very simple stuff. It's just a lot of times we get way too complex and it's like the milestones are important because I know some people might be like, well, I don't like to focus on points. It's not controllable. It's like, you're right. But a milestone, you need to see a milestone as a guide, Mm -hmm. right? It's like a bumper lane because as nice as it is to pretend that results don't matter, they do, especially at the high performance world. The key though is making sure that you're focused on what you can control and not the results. Yeah. Actions are controllable. Medita- or mental reps five times a week is controllable. Working on your shot every day for five to 10 minutes after practice is controllable. Working on your practice five to 10 minutes a day after, or passing five to 10 minutes a day after practice is controllable. All the other crap isn't. So we use this as a funnel to get our athletes focused on the actions they need to take. Well, the results I would say, or how I explain it sometimes is it's going to give you a reason to figure out the how, which Mm -hmm. are those actions. Yeah. So like it's to Matt's point, it's not that you just simply focus on, okay, I need 20 goals this month. Yeah. It's how am I going to prepare myself in order to get those 20 goals? Yep. That that's the difference, right? Because without the without the end result, how are you going to set actions to get to where you to get there, right? Yeah, and that's I just wrote this down because it's true. But targets are just a tool of getting you out of the mentality of focusing on the results and into a mentality of focusing on the actions. Mm-hmm. It's just a tool. To, a TPMA is just a tool to do that. Like think about it. We start with an outcome at the TPMA. We then go into a purpose of why it's important. We then go into milestones of what we will indicate if we hit it. And then we get into the last most controllable part, which is a simple question of what actions do I need to take to accomplish this Mm -hmm. daily or weekly, right? And it's like, okay, once you set those actions, I want to be very clear to any listeners out there. You are going to completely ignore the T, P, and M part. You've done that. You need to make sure you stay focused now on the A's on a daily basis. That's it. So we now know what visualization is. We now know how to set targets. Let's talk about types of visualization and how to visualize. So first, here's how we do it at Molotium. This is the simplest way. We've linked many different, many to many different episodes, I should say, our visualization or mental reps um, audio track Mm -hmm. that you can find. Do we want to link it below? Yeah, we'll put it in this one. Let's link it below then. Um, It's down below. But here's how we like to have our athletes visualize. We start with that target. We then make sure to ask ourselves the question of, okay, what will allow me to accomplish, what two, uh, what one to two skills will allow me to accomplish this target this month? So if my target is to walk into Christmas time and I am not wanting to worry about anything and I go through the T- the TPMA process, I find one of the milestones is increasing my point total this month and increasing my assist total this month. Then maybe the two skills I need to focus on are mid-range game shooting and my passing from in the key, okay? Those are my two skills I'm focused on. Fantastic. What I'm going to do then when I have those two skills I'm focused on, I'm then going to sub them into the visualization. So we visualize three sets, 10 reps, and we don't look to the outcomes first when we're visualizing because that's like building a house from the roof down. That doesn't work. Instead, what we do is we say to ourselves, okay, First, you need to visualize yourself performing the basic skills right because visualizing performing the skills right is ultimately what allows you to feel certain. If you're just visualizing the end result, you're not going to feel certain of your skills that you have. So you need to do that. So first thing is you need to visualize your skills, the one to two of them, going through with the perfect technique. So all I suggest you do is write down and describe what that perfect technique looks like, right? It makes it way easier for your mind to interpret and get and it gets it out of your head and onto paper. The second set of 10 reps that you're going to visualize is seeing yourself go through the thing that's giving you the biggest challenge and come out on the other side. That's why with your players, sometimes I, you know, see themselves not getting the result or whatever it might be. This is a great one because a lot of times we like to pretend as athletes that nothing affects us in performance Mm -hmm. when the truth is that everything will probably try to affect you. It's your job though, to make sure you stay focused. So by seeing yourself overcome a challenge, that's going to allow you to then get rid of that anxiousness or uncertainty behind certain situations. So all you want to do is look at the skill and ask yourself, okay, what gives me the biggest challenge and how do I overcome it? So with an NBA player we had that was doing this, his biggest challenge was the fact that he had a tough time hitting threes when someone was running at him. 
So what he literally did was when he was describing this, he's like, okay, I need to see myself having the ball beyond the arc. I'm pulling up, I'm keeping myself um, square and I'm keeping myself balanced. Somebody's running at me, but I shoot anyways. I'm seeing myself shoot that ball. The ball goes into the net and I land with balance. And I know that's how I need to shoot when a player is coming at me. I know it's a little tedious, but trust me, doing this process will help, Mm -hmm. right? So you need to write out the challenge you're facing and then how to overcome it and be specific with it. Your brain likes specificity. And the last part then, you can just see the outcome that you want. So if you want to see yourself going into games and crushing it and scoring from beyond the arc all the time, do it. That's what we do with our pros. So now you have the basic skill you trust. You trust yourself in the middle level, which is to overcome the challenge. Now you can see yourself getting the result that you want and you feel good about it. You feel certain. And maybe um, even one thing that someone can do if perhaps if they um, if they can't see themselves getting through that challenge, maybe do a, a little bit of film watching to see someone go through it. And then you, you at least you have an example of what yeah. to do. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Um, I love that. So now that you know how to visualize and how to set targets. There's so many different types of visualization out there that I want to say this, like this is specifically guys for anybody tuning in. And again, this is, if you want to work with a Mala team coach on this, by all means, go to our site. You can apply for, um, you know, working with us one-on-one. I know this might be a little overwhelming for some of you taking in this info, but the thing we talk about the most when we're working with clients on this is that you really need to understand this is specifically for getting performance results. This is a results-based visualization. I've heard different influencers out there talk about, you know, motivational visualization where you see yourself not getting the result and you experience that. You totally can do that, but that's a way to kind of motivate yourself and kick yourself in the ass. That's not what we're talking about here, but if you're somebody that needs to motivate themselves, one way to do that is to see how life can get worse if you don't accomplish your target and how life can get better if you do. That will motivate you, right? Another form of visualization you can do is simply technical visualization, which we mix into this one. If you think of our visualization, it's kind of like an all-in-one. Again, what we work on with our clients. But when you're going through a more technical focused visualization, this is a really good one for individuals, you know, to make sure that we are focused on properly getting those neuro associations and technique together. So that might just be where it's like a complex skill. You're learning it for the first time. And the only thing you want to do is build that focus around the skill. The last kind of visualization, and there's so many more different ones, but to keep it simple on this and not to ramble on, you know, 25 different ways about it. But another form of visualization you can practice if you really want is one free where you're returning from injury. This is one we do with a lot of athletes that are going through, you know, the tough times on it and the times where we are focused essentially on bringing athletes back from a movement they couldn't do before. A simple way to do this is to simply get into the movement that you need to do, like a squat or whatever it might be, focus on that squat and go from there, right? Mm -hmm. So perfect technique behind it. But again, these are the three types we focus on. There's many different kinds out there, but to keep it simple, there's a motivational one you can do. There's an outcome one you can do, and there's a technical one you can do. That's how we look at it. Now, the last thing we'll tap into, let's talk about uh, how frequently to do this visualization and target setting, because I think that's important. Visualization, guys, we suggest doing at least three times a week. We would cap it off at five. That way you don't have that point where you're just overwhelmed with it, right? You want to do it the night before for the next day, and then you want to top up the day of if you want. Yeah, that's pretty, like, even some of the guys and, and girls that I've done, like I said, they did it um, before training sessions. Uh, sometimes they like to do it at night. For some some people at night, they get actually a little bit too hyped up and they're too ready to go. So then it's hard for them to sleep. So uh, it really depends on, I guess, you yeah. um, and when you feel comfortable doing it. So it's really up to you. 100%. Um, so that's the most important one there. On the other side of it, too, with target setting, I would suggest doing your target setting once every 30 days. You know, you can have your targets for the year that you set. That's totally fine. But the most important thing for your target setting is the fact that you are getting into a spot where you just want to make sure you focus on the most important things for the next days in front of you. Oftentimes, we find that athletes are way too focused on, you know, like 
I know you want the big picture, but you need to be doing a very good job at breaking it down into daily chunks and monthly chunks. I suggest doing the 30 days at a time, right? So I wouldn't go above and beyond that. I wouldn't go above and beyond any of, you know, the things you need to do there. I would just simply focus on what you can control that with that and focus on the next 30 days in front of you. Do your TPMA, set your target of where you want to be, put a purpose behind it, set some milestones that will indicate you got there and then break it down into the daily actions and focus on it. And the most important thing about your targets are when you set these targets, you want to make sure to focus on them daily. You want to review them daily. Don't just set them and forget them. Write them down, put them in a journal, put them on your wall, put them on your mirror, put them in front of you, put them on your desktop background, put them on your phone background, but you need to see these things daily. We actually have our athletes in our programs when we're working with them, work this into their morning power system because this is the most important thing they can do for themselves is to keep them focused. If they don't, they go all over the place. They're gonna really lose that focus and lose the magic of this skill. Anything to add? Um, no, I think, I think today for, for anyone listening, um, if you, if, if you're curious about visualization, I would definitely click the link below, try it out. Um, and if, if you have any questions about it, I mean, feel free to send us a message, whether yeah. DM, email, whatever the case may be, uh, because it really does help. And if you're someone, uh, like I said before that the season gets a little bit stale target setting, it's a great way to break it up. Um, and if you're going into a new season, just to see the different results from breaking up season to just kind of to have a good season going through it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Other than that, if you're an athlete or high performer, because we don't just work with athletes, we do all kinds of high performance and you want to work with us or one of our coaches, simply click the link below. There is a application link that you can apply to one of our coaching programs. We've also got our Mala Team Pocket Coach. And of course, the visualization is linked down below or the mental reps that you can use. That way you can do your repetitions mentally and lock into that. With that, please make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share this episode if you are tuning in from YouTube, and just simply share this with anybody that you feel can benefit from it. We're trying to grow our community here, trying to branch us out, help as many people as we possibly can. And uh, we can't wait to serve all of y'all. So with that being said, have a great day, stay resilient, and we'll talk to you in the next one.